back, we have begun the winner's brackets. Uh, we're going to kick it off with RDU versus Saviz. RDU sporting his team's deck with the uh, with the Druid, the Priest, the Dragon Warrior, very standard stuff. And uh, Saviz with his own semi-standard lineup, uh, probably closer to what the rest of the players and tournaments are bringing. Um, I think those are the three most popular classes, if I'm not mistaken. There have been a lot of warriors, but I think with uh, with today's participants, uh, Rogue might surpass Warrior as the third most popular class in the tournament. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's it's definitely been surprising to see Rogue succeed so much, but at the same time, pretty cool. I mean, Rogue is. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, Rogue and Shaman are two classes that people complain they don't see very often because of their relatively weak power level to the rest of everybody else. Um, but you know, Rogue is showing pretty decent results. The, part of the reason why it's losing is because it has to play a lot so many mirror matches. It feels like. Yeah. Uh, but overall, it's doing a pretty decent job getting getting the win. Um, we've seen all kinds of variations as well. Some oil variants. Some. Not, not even oils. We just have to call it Violet Teacher Rogue now. Uh, and then really centering around gadgets and auctioneers and other stuff too. So I, I'm looking forward to see uh, how it matches up against these dragon decks from G2, which seem to skirt by. Uh, some of them have been really close series. Even mm -hmm. Tice has some really na uh, nail-biting series as well. So um, Yeah, Tice did qualify on the first day. And uh, his teammates, RDU and Life Coach, are currently in the winner's brackets. So uh, it is looking very promising. Maybe in the end, uh, we'll have to face off against each other. <laughs> could could happen. Yeah, no worries. It's it's okay, though. Like I, I think in the end, if you just win your series, it's fine. Um, mm -hmm. at, at this stage, almost every person, I mean, pretty much every person who's won has revealed what deck they're playing. Uh, but if you get to the next stage of, like, let's say you lose here, you have to play against some people who haven't revealed a couple of their decks, maybe. Um, it does get a little bit nerve-wracking. So, uh, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited to see how far some of these guys can go, because it seems to be two strong chains of thought. The control-heavy sides or the aggressive-heavy sides. Um, and they're just going head-to-head. -head. Okay, well, it is going to be control versus aggro yet again. It's going to be uh, this uh, very aggressive Shaman deck that we've seen time and time again against the Dragon Priest of RDU here. Now, uh, the last time we saw these exact two decks match up against each other, uh, Zele pulled some miracle victory. Um, will it happen again? I don't know. Well, a couple things happened. The first is Zele saw his hand. He saw, he saw Elemental Destruction, Rockbiter, Doomhammer, Flame Juggler. And I think he drew like a lightning bolt or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he also had like a wolf rider. So it was like, okay, well, uh, this hand is not exactly great against a turn one Northshire cleric. I could try to fight on board and ultimately let him draw cards and potentially snowball this game. Or I can try this completely from left field strategy of not playing anything uh, and, and it ended up working. And, and a lot of people are, you know, even us. Can't really blame Life Coach for any of the decisions he made. In fact, it looked like yeah. he read it. So yeah, it looks like he was playing perfectly. Yeah. Okay, well, there's the Harrison, um, an early Harrison draw and uh, an early elemental destruction. That's gonna kind of suck. It looks like this this Shaman deck is gonna be uh, a little bit slow out of the gate here. Um, but he does have the the Warlock hero power now with Finley, and that's mm -hmm. gonna allow him to sustain as long as he wants. Yeah, the punish onto the uh, Northshire Cleric is huge. Can't draw cards. Um, it also makes cards like even Abuse of Sergeant itself much better. And, you know, one of those things you have to think about is, sure, you have Harrison, but if Shaman ever draws it and it's more board-centric with how it does its damage, then it might not matter if you have Harrison Jones. We've seen some people be in situations where they can't play Harrison in anticipation for the Doomhammer, and the Doomhammer doesn't come. Okay, uh, looks like the Farseer will not crush the early game this time, but the uh, the Twilight Whelp is going to see some play here with the uh, the Azure Drake draw as it can now activate its battle cry. Yeah, you know that's that's not too bad. It still has the biggest minion on board um, by a, a fair margin, so yeah, it's it's good. I don't, I don't think your opponent. Would, would you like Lava Burst, something like this, to get the three damage in? Maybe, to preserve the board, because your hand's not that great. 
Eh, Savicious life taps here. Not bad. One drop. Looks like he's going to go with a lightning bolt here. Lightning bolt to preserve one damage. Well, no, he's, it's going to preserve the two damage. Um, I think that's a reasonable play. I mean, he did coin it out. Um, we do know that the, uh, the the G2 arsenal contains six Earthen Ring Farseers. So, I mean, every minion you don't kill is a minion that's going to punish your, your, your loose play. It's a fair, it's a fair point. Um, and the Farseers, of course, can double as healing to put yourself out of burn range, which is pretty huge. Smeets is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with control. He's actually even using his rock fighters to get past this. Uh, really convinced that he has to control the board here, and he's going to sit on things like Elemental Destruction, which seems to be one of the interesting cards to how the Dragon Priests interact with everything else, because their minions are high health, but... Elemental destruction can sometimes reach it. Worm rest agent yet again. Um, these these minions with like no attack values and a ton of HP are are giving uh, the priest such a huge health buffer. Mm, okay, feral spirits pretty decent. Um, even potentially hitting into this worm rest agent. What do you think about that? Uh, he's doing this in order to play around Holy Nova. If you'd have a Holy Nova, it would it would trade with the board now. Otherwise, he could attack and then Holy Nova. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. No Holy Nova yet, but we do have Farseer plays. We do have Azure Drake plays. Uh, Azure Drake would make Holy Nova better if it picks it up. It does also give up your last dragon. But you're not drawing because you're going to be playing Cabal Shadow Priest next turn, most likely. Right. I'm pretty happy with the Azure Drake play. I don't think he can really do much better than that. Yeah. Well, Tunnel Trog can start benefiting off of some of that overload, but uh, we'll see how far these uh, these things can go because they're still far away from threatening lethal. And mm -hmm. he's still looking for that Doom Hammer, but I don't know if he actually really wants that Doom Hammer if he knew what his opponent was holding. <laughs> Let me change your mind. Yeah, I mean, right now it feels like the the priest is gonna struggle to to maintain enough cards. So the only way that changes if, is if the doom hammer hits the board. Okay, lightning bolt and uh, argent horse rider. None of mana to rock biter the Ar argent horse rider though. Does that matter? Hmm. Um, probably. I don't know. I, I really do like the, uh, the ability to to life tap sometimes against priest, but at the cost of your board is is pretty intense. Yeah, if you use like lightning bolt and life tap, you're gonna overload for three, Ooh. and then would you consider trading? Oh man. It's pretty rough here. Probably, probably just face. It's a lot of damage to miss. It's HP. so much damage to miss. And I don't think you're in a position where it's like, oh, he's trading. He's trading he the lightning the bolt. Yeah. Okay. Man, so beats real. He's playing control shaman. I don't really. Care. That's pretty much what it is. It just happens to have fast oh. cards. Wrecked. Whoa. The ultimate punish. Holy smite. Feels real bad, man. I think it's um it's good enough to play the um the North Shar here. The Sham the Shaman can't really deal with even one attack minions very well, so I just feel bad for Savitz. He's he's invested so much into the board and he every couple turns uh, the board's clear and priest is at full health. And now he's investing uh more of his mana into drawing a ton of cards. There he finally finds a doom hammer, but that's also going to get destroyed. Oh, that's that's a little bit too quick. Elemental destruction is gonna crush the priest again. Yeah, but the priest can just draw cards. Like part of the reason why Life Coach struggled as much as he did uh, in that state was um, he didn't have any cards outside of like Nefarian at that moment, right? So I think uh, if Savitz ends up playing like that doom hammer soon, could be in trouble.
Although one thing to consider is that because he's overloaded, he's like unable to uh, play the Doom Hammer immediately. So in some ways, it's like a blessing in disguise that overload. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the Totem Golem was meaningful there. Uh, he's overloaded for five, right? Oh no, he's overloaded for seven. He could have overloaded himself for eight, and then fl <laughs> Flame Shock or Lava Shock would have been two mm. mana exactly. Yeah, he still can flame. Fl uh, lava Shock. He still can flame. God dang it, Grip. I'm sorry, he still but... can Lava Shock uh, and and unlock all of his crystals to use the remaining eight here. Mm -hmm. Picks up Abusive Sergeant. I mean, this is part of the reason why a lot of times Agro Shaman can be considered a strong favorite against Priest, Dragon Priest, is that Dragon Priest like can't really finish the game. And Agro Shaman still has plenty of time to draw into what should be game-ending burst. But that one X factor is that Harrison Jones. And that's if, and only if, you'll ever see the Doomhammer come out here. I mean, Savitz could be going next level and just avoiding the Doomhammer plays until he has, like, double right rock player to go for 16 damage. Alright. Well, looks like he wants to clear the board still as much as possible. Still. Yeah. Trades with this Twilight. Uh, nah, now Ardu's like, well, do I just pass? I mean, he's at 30 health. Yeah, he's also got double Holy Nova. Double Holy Nova, I think, kills every single card in this deck, by the way. Yeah, there's no five health minions. There's no death rattles that are, like, hard to get past, so... Yep. And that should be... Like, pretty much playing the three minions on the right. You, know, you just want to keep loading up some more board tension. Oh man, he's gonna get destroyed by Devil Holy Nova. He's playing out his, his whole minion base. Yeah. He's holding back the Totem Golem, so ultimately it won't be the, the end all be all, but. Like, so these life tap for like five turns in a row. You know, I wonder if he was inspired by the game that you saw uh, Zelay do. Because mm -hmm. it's like, he's he's almost going to be fatigued out. He only can life tap two more times or even just one more time he taps. He's in danger of dying to like some immediate burst. He's just going to deck out soon. Yeah, he's only got four cards left. Is it, It's time to Harrison and then, or to play Doomhammer, get Harrison and then Doomhammer again anyways. Uh, Saviz knows. Saviz knows it's coming. Yeah, he's well aware, but it's one of those things where uh, he knows that if Priest draws that many cards, uh, he has to try to end the game very soon. That's why I think he was hoping for another Rock Biter. Wow! Look at that. Well, if he didn't draw that, he was certainly bound to. He's going to go through a huge portion of his deck. Another important card, the Power Word Shield. Uh, Savit's already used the Earth Shock, and he knew he's like, oh god, he had that Harrison Jones. But Savit, he's been holding that since the very beginning of the game. That's yeah. been there for uh, you know, solid almost like ten minutes now. Whoa, Blood Mage! What? It, it gives him the burst. I guess. You have to wonder, though, was there too much board-centric plays for Savitz? Or maybe that's just the way you, you, you feels like you have to win against the Priest. I think he has to Lava Burst the 3-8, and then uh, Lava Pop Shock the 5-4. Then play the Charger on the 5-4, then Doom Hammer Face. I give you enough crystals to do everything. I don't think you can actually doom hammer right this turn. Oh, okay. You only can play the blood mage, which conveniently gets you close to fatigue. You have to kill the Harrison Jones. And uh, are nope, not lethal. Close to lethal. It's three. He's at three HP here. Let me change your mind. He's just gonna play keep away for now. There's really no rush. Yeah. 
Dragon Priest surviving. And then yeah, I don't, I don't see hammer. how. Oh, he likes that. How this happens. That's no, gonna no be chance. it. So uh, absolutely no chance. Just playing keep away, and the aggro shaman fails yet again to the dragon priest. Wow, Fredon, you're looking real good there. I didn't realize you dressed up for the occasion as well as you did. Uh, what, what can I say, man? I'm a <laughs> showstopper. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, certainly Saviza's uh, shaman has stopped once. Um, it's still this warrior deck that my faith hasn't been like fully restored in yet. I mean, it's it's had some decent results today, but uh, he's still absent pretty hard here. Yeah, um, I, I, we, we also still have yet to see Savisa's Dragon Priest in action, which is a very different take on what G2 wants to do. He's got the Arcanized Soul Priest, he's got the Circle of Healings and the Entombs. Um, almost borrowing a, a huge chunk from the Control Priest. There's that weird tech that we saw that differentiates some of the oh, lists God. here. The Arathi Weaponsmith. One of the cards that's really given a little bit of mid-range life to the Dragon Warrior. It definitely like seems it. like the, the G2 deck lists are, are very well refined. Um, I think you, you can tell that they worked as a team to come up with uh, more refined lists than most players in the tournament, I would say. Yes. I'm de I definitely agree oh, that amazing. that's a really strong way to play, and they all have they all happen to be sprinkled across the bracket too. One of the Fly biggest tragedies Lord. is you do all this prep for that, and then you face your teammate in the first round or something. <laughs> all right, well, it's looking very good for the shaman in this case. Um, yeah, now we finally have an opportunity to leverage board, which just never seemed to happen. And Feral Spirits... This is insane. Especially if the juggles land onto Bran. You want one juggle to land. You don't want two. Well, you can just trade the, the Leopard Gnome. Would but you, though? I guess you oh, zero! Never lucky. It. Can you ignore it? I don't oh, know. Probably God. not. Alright. We're going for it. He's gonna get two weapons from the Arathi weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Dual wield. Four sick drew the claw for four mana. Five Still very behind on the board though. Is gonna come up next too. That's the big thing. Uh, let's see. Abusive gives you a juggle, which could end up giving you the snipe onto the uh onto the um what? Twilight Guardian. But I'm not sure if you want to give no, up. I, I think I think you want abuse of the Leper Gnome and you suicide both the two one minions. I think the knife juggler is still too valuable to give up. Okay. It's true because you have taunts, right? And they can't mm -hmm. get through it yet. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I wonder. Putting it on the taunt minion because he's almost certain to trade that. Like that juggle actually kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it, it was almost any way you combine it. The best best juggle was probably phase. Yeah, definitely. He still has opportunities, rock fighter as well. Oh wow! Preserving his taunt. He's damage. valuing the trog a lot. Mm -hmm. So much damage. Pretty, pretty cool way to look at it, wow. but um, that is a lot of damage. I think he's got to play the the monkey and the cruel task here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely on that side as well. Farseer doesn't like you're still looking at seven damage on board after you cool Taskmaster, and Farseer stops three of that damage. Monkey stops four, so monkey's just a little bit better. Plus, it challenges the Trog, so it forces the other two attack minions to go through. However, Doomhammer is waiting on the other side. Um, is Doomhammer the best? Doomhammer essentially gives you two. It gives you six damage. Um, the Lightning Bolt and the Rock Biter give you seven damage. Um, is there a sequencing here where it works? So four in there, and then three plus. 
Seven. No, he has two damage off lethal. He has to doom hammer and set up for lethal next turn. All right, doom hammer it is, and uh, let's—I mean, there's still no rush. Warrior can't really turn it away, even if he got Harrison Jones. I needed a one mana tree of life in order to establish back the game. So uh, there it is. Game yep. series is tied, just like that. Shaman got the important win. Dragon Warrior uh, resumes its normal ways that we're accustomed to. But I mean, that was a great start for the Shaman. One of the best you'll see. An unchecked juggler going into Tunnel Trog, leading into Feral Spirits. Come on. I mean, <laughs> how does it get any better than that? Yeah, it, it it almost doesn't. It almost doesn't. I think the double Trog into some Overload shenanigans is probably slightly better, but it's not, it's not much better. All right, well, the, uh, the Druid Mirror has commenced here. Uh, I think Saviz is playing... Uh, I think most of the players of the tournament are playing very similar Druid decks, while G2 has definitely refined uh, some of the secondary decks uh, a lot more than some of the other players. Uh, I think the Druid lists are still uh, very standardized. Uh, the one difference is Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. um, we still haven't actually seen Ragnaros make a significant impact, so while we you know, pray G2 for being able to step up and introduce some cool concepts to decks building and lineup assembly, but Ragnaros has also been questionable. It's cool because we really don't see the big game hunters, so Ragnaros seems to have been an, a good call on paper, but the impact has been minimal. Like, actually, Ragnaros costed life yeah. the game, and yeah, that's true. also someone else uh, was hitting the 2-2. Two -two. It was uh, RDU. RDU hit Firebat's 2-2 two -two instead. So, uh, they've been better off playing, like, Sylvanas or something else like that. Alright. Um, pretty standard opener here. Yeah, Darnassus Aspirin forcing a reaction from your opponent. And it's okay because you, you want your opponent to be hero-powering the Aspirin. Make them float mana inefficiency. That Wrath was a pretty nice draw, given the circumstances. Yeah, it allows you to push for a bigger board. Next turn you have the two one ones along with the Keeper. And uh, you really have to save that Innervate for the Ancient Door. It's just a difference maker between getting that successful wild growth or not. If you say he doesn't have that ramp, then you then the um then you'll see RDU coin Drew with the Claw protect that. And then he has Azure Drake. And then all of a sudden you find yourself three mana crystals behind because of it. Ooh, that Innervate. That is a big deal. Uh, yeah, big innervating out a, uh, an Emperor just makes everything more awesome. <laughs> My god. And it, it hits Force it's Nature Super Tour. Yeah. It's like, sure, hitting minions is great, but now... And, and it doesn't look like it's going to get checked. Because the best play is an Innervate 7 drop. I mean, unless Savitz feels so compelled to use Force of Nature to clear it. I think he will play the Ancient of War. Yeah, it looks like he is. The Ancient of War just um, allows him to maintain aggression. While the Ancient of Lore uh, is mostly investing in the future. But his future is doomed because his opponent is going to have like a 10 mana discount. Mm hmm well, you can play the Druid of the Claw to protect your Thorson a little bit better, but that's where Force of Nature actually becomes very good. Um, to clear the board, keep keep pressure up. Uh, so as much as this might look alluring, because you're like, oh yeah, I'd want more, it's actually not that great for RDU here. Well, at the same time, he does have a 5 mana, 14 damage minimum combo. That's That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, you're right. If he picks up Force of Nature number two on 10 mana, he can Force of Nature, Force of Nature, Coin Savage Roar. God. <laughs> That's right. Druid. It's, uh, it's a possibility, and it might even become a reality. That, I believe, is... Uh, let's see, that's 24 damage. He can coin out his own Ancient of War. I kind of like that. It doesn't get challenged by the board as it is.
I mean, the, the Azure Drake really doesn't accomplish anything on the board. Only if you think your opponent won't kill it, then it'll be great with a Savage Roar combo, but I think that's very optimistic. Yeah, it's, uh... It's, it's... It's definitely one of those situations where you just need to climb back onto the board as quickly as possible. And so the Ancient of War is that ticket there. But in the meantime, so he's just starting to hit some of his... I mean, he's he's starting to get really good stuff in his hand. High quality stuff. Ancient of War will pick up more cards. Emperor throws and reduce all those costs. Azure Jake will keep the gas going. Um, or even act as a necessary stopgap for pressure and being able to get spell power bonus. Uh, I really like all that. And he's also one Savage away from being able to threaten his own combo. Mm -hmm. I like the Ancient of Lore here. The, uh, the Emperor doesn't really discount cards that are very important right now. Makes the attack with a 1-1 to kind of threaten a, a little bit better situation with the swipe, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or MC Tech. Alright, well, what can we do here? We can do Wrath and Combo. <laughs> That's pretty nice. <laughs> wrath Combo. Jeez. <laughs> On seven mana. That actually might be the play to stabilize the board. You have a 5-9. You can clear the board with Combo. Yeah, I, I think that's actually the play. Which is pretty humorous. You don't really see it cleared like that. Um, so Viz is not going to be happy to see his board clear, but he does have other stuff to play. I guess the, also this big concern is um, whether or not he can check this Ancient of War, which looks like he can. He's got the Silence to do four damage to it, and then he's got the Savage Combatant. Yeah, just to threaten a, a trade. Mm -hmm. But he is going to get punished. The Azure Drake swipe is going to take care of that Savage Combatant. Yeah, even if he didn't have Azure Drake, he could have just swiped it normally as well. Mm -hmm. Would you play Emperor then? If you're no, you can't really play around that. There's there's no, no. way. No, the, the Ancient of War is too big of a threat. If only some of these players had Black Knight. <laughs> oh, the minions vanished. Wow, Sorcery. that's a great magic trick. <laughs> All right. It's like we're just switching POVs, a little quick spectator bug there. Mm -hmm. um, the the second swipe, not really that relevant. The first swipe still being the most impactful thing here. Uh, it, it's a little bug, guys. Don't worry. Savitz did not switch, or Artie did not switch to, uh, to Dragon Priest all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, just using a little makeshift cover. Mm -hmm. CBS in the meantime, he still has uh, some gas, right? Even Wild Growth, if he can get that card cycle, he can even still have room to hit something really nice with the Emperor Thorson. Because he already used at 15 health, so if he can just get past this Ancient of War, you'll be in a good spot. No. Oh, wait, uh, sorry, I'm still looking yeah. at the old board state. He's, he's already passed it, right? He already uh, Kind it. of. He passed it, but he didn't kill it. Here we go. This is uh, this is more appropriate view of the situation. Yeah, and I think you just kill the Ancient of War because even if you hit the face, um, there's just a lot of cards that can really punish you, and you don't want to leave that war up. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, you, you just got comboed. Are you... Are you really getting comboed by the other exact combo pieces already? Yeah, it's unlikely. But uh, again, we're, we're, we got told that this is a spectator bug. Bug, uh, we rejoined, so we're just gonna have to. Uh, we're just gonna have to fly on Savitz's cam as the main POV. Uh, apologies, guys, for flipping on you. But the bottom player is Savitz. The top player is RDU, and we're on RDU's turn here. Um. Keep in mind that RDU had the second swipe. He's going to heal power pass? Oh my goodness. Well, I think swipe was the only card in, in his hand last last turn. So it seems like he didn't really draw anything more than that. That's a big swing opportunity for Savitz. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to uh, to see the, um, the wild growth first. The wild growth might produce like another Ancient of War, which I think is probably worth playing now. Somewhere in space. Yeah, that seems reasonable. 
I, I mean, I, I wouldn't blame him for doing the draw plays as well, like Wild Growth, Azure Drake, Mind Control Tech. Just get deeper into your deck. You want to find mm-hmm. Savage Roar to end the game. Like, you don't want the game to drag out too much, and you're not going to end the game by playing Thorson and Mind Control Tech. It's only 14, 15 damage next turn. So it's 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 all it's all reasonable. It depends on what you really feel like is your best chance to win, and m- minion pressure is generally really good. Okay. Well, he's going to be one damage off with this line of play. Yeah, and now it's up to RDU to generate a response. Or are we on? Or is it Savitz's turn? It looks like it is Savitz's turn. My apologies. I think I had that flip then. I'm not sure. I think Saviz is the one who is recovering. I think yeah. uh, RDU is the is the one who is on the play here, trying to figure out a way to deal with the Tharson. Okay, yeah. Uh, from the cams, it looks like that, because RDU is leaning in pretty closely, furling his brow, <laughs> trying to figure out uh, the best line here. If he clears... Uh, then he's spending his entire turn doing that, not developing the Ancient of Lore. Oh, here we go. Ooh. All right. So I guess this is uh, Swipe Face and Trees clean up the board. So he's going to be... That's the second force of nature. Yeah, no more that's combo. Huge information for Svitz. Picks up the Azure Drake and Wrath not really doing much, so I guess you can cycle in any way you want. Wild Growth as well. You want to hit that five mana minion that's oh so nice. Drew the Claw would be mint. <laughs> What's he going to get here? Uh, not quite. That's kind of a blank for now. One of the best cards you can get in the start of a turn, but not really mm. at this moment. Uh, Savit's just going to pass it over. RDU needs to swing it one more time here. He doesn't have any swipe or anything oh, like that man. left either. He's got no swipes, no force. His main source of bursts is actually Ragnaros, but it's going to be difficult to deal with all those little things. Yeah, Rag, once again, not being the best possible card he can draw to finish the game. Hmm, I wonder. Would you Wild Growth first to see what you draw? Or would you a- a- Ancient of Lore? I don't, I don't know if there's any one card that really helps you here. Ooh, yeah. wow. He heals. Healing himself. I feel that might just doom you. Well, uh... Like it's not you don't have any more combos in your deck, so while you do stay alive a little bit, how are you gonna win this game? Uh Ragnaros finish maybe. Hmm. The Wrath though is so big. Wrath for five? Jeez. Yeah. Happens all the time. Two like oh my goodness, that's so much. And now uh, I, I think Artie completely locked himself out of this game, unless there's some one last surprise that we're not expecting here. Not it. Well, that is a pretty poor surprise. Yeah. One more chance. Oh. Yeah, Ragnaros killing a four mana minion, I believe, prevents him from dying. Or a four attack minion. Uh, well, that, that'll do, actually. That, that would make it so he doesn't lose yep. immediately. It's, it's, it's slightly better than Ragnaros because he gets the hero power. <laughs> Take out another minion for Savage Roar to have less impact to kill him. But it doesn't matter because Savitz is still on a Savage Roar with the Force of Nature to win the game. I wonder. He's really taking his time here because he's, he's thinking how he can possibly win. And I think the main way that he does is actually Savage Roar now. Savage Roar now will make it so if this opponent doesn't hero power and he top decks Ragnaros hear me out and then hero powers the druid <laughs> and doesn't die and Ragnaros hits face Stop, rip. that would be lethal but this oh. this is the type of things that you are thinking about like when yeah you are when, you're, you're, right, you're right when you're in this situation 
you, you just you just have to see how you could possibly win, and usually it's on the back of some really outrageous scenarios. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, a lot of those times you have to think, what are my outs? What, what are those situations where I actually have a 1% chance to win? Um, when you have $30,000 on the line in the prize pool, you know, for these online tournaments, you definitely want to. But I can I know for guys like RDU2, it's even more than that. Um, it's, it's also about pride and, and being able to prove to all the haters, you know. RDU still feels like there's people who doubt his legitimacy as a player, so he always feels like he wants to showcase skill when he can. And in these cases, spotting the 1% and getting it is the hardest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Well, from what it looks, uh, I don't believe there's any way RDU is going to do anything this game. But um, I think playing for the Ragnaros finish is his best chance, and that, that does involve uh, Savage Roar, I believe. Uh, most likely, yeah. Uh, it looks like he's just going to do it to the face, just because so he can have Ragnaros. <laughs> um, oh, okay. yeah. I think you could kill the 4 2, increase your chance of staying alive, and then Savage Roar for 3, put him at 8. So, yeah. Ragnaros is better out. But it, does, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's, there's no way that was happening. And it looks like Saviz has uh, taken the lead once again here. So 2 right. 1 in favor for Saviz, who's uh, one game away. Uh, I believe his last class is a priest and not a... Was it a rogue? I thought it was... I think it was last... a rogue. No, I think, uh, I think Saviz that did not bring priest. We, we can check the, uh, the deck uh, the deck titles that we were giving. Uh, Saviz brought Druid Shaman and... Oh, and priest of the tournament. Well yeah. then. Acute observations. Well, I remember specifically that Savitz brought a half control, half dragon priest. Mm -hmm. um, and when we say control, I mean, dragon's priest generally still wants to play a control-ish archetype, but control priest is even more late game centric and very spell centric, while dragons are very minion based. They like to play a lot of early curve and hit a lot of powerful minions that buff each other. Um, Savitz's deck is unfortunately sometimes awkward with how it uses its circle of healings with the flash heals uh, and Alcanized Soul Priest in relation to dragons. Because, like, sometimes you just really want to heal your minion back up and you have Soul Priest on the board. Alright, well, uh... Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Combo. That is the dream! Murder. Back that in the day, Priest... Priest couldn't really beat Druid that consistently, but if you could do this, it was one of the best at doing it. Mm. Oh man, now RDU has no answer to that. No, his hand He's got is, inner this range head is just nothing. junk. It's, it's dumb. Wow. Oh no, he's closing his eyes. He doesn't even want to look at the screen anymore. <laughs> oh man. Are you and uh, he hits a dragon with the buff. This is starting to get really snowbally. Um, yeah. I guess he can at least silence the the two sixth. Yeah. It is a play. I must safeguard. Uh, it's definitely one of the better plays. That's like the only play, really. I mean, he he had to play the keeper no matter what, right? So if he, if he had to play the Keeper, it, it was just more convenient this way for him. Yeah, but Priest already survived the, the worst part of the game, which is Druid ramping and hitting reasonable minions and Priest not having a board. And now Priest has a board. It's going to be even hitting better quality minions with bigger impacts. And if the board ever, if like something significant ever came out, uh, he'd still be able to effectively address it. Shadow Word Pain. Oh my goodness. Right on cue. You, you you just use it and you start pushing. You don't want to give up too much of your board. Yeah, you want it you want to entomb an ancient war. You wanna make Yep. You wanna make these plays while you can. Or in the worst case scenario, Ragnaros, you know. Ragnaros would be pretty effective against mm -hmm. a priest of all decks. Alright. Well, the Druid has a lot of cards now, and it's ramped pretty well. 
Um, the the big minion advantage is going to fairly quickly dwindle away. Uh, it's still going to be present for the next couple turns, though. Yeah, one thing that was really relevant was that Savis missed a legitimate turn four play. He at best he just healed his four seven back up, which is okay. But he wanted to develop another minion. And well, that turn six play was pretty horrible from the Druid as well. Blackwing Corruptor or Azure Drake with Flash Heal? I kind of want Azure like Drake, Drake. Fla yeah. Flash Heal because mm -hmm. you still have another Dragon for the Blackwing Corruptor and you get to keep your minions on board. Plus, Azure Drake gets out the spell power so that Holy Nova is more relevant too. Here we'll have to see an Ancient of War, I believe. It It's very good on this board and you've seen a death play out. There's no question that RDU will play this, and uh, Entomb yeah. will make him pretty unhappy again. <laughs> yep, it's a nice minion. It looks even nicer in my deck, is mm -hmm. uh, what you say it when you Entomb your opponent. And RDU is just going to be pretty crushed, because he has a lot of resources and cards, but he's dying. And in fact, yeah. it's, it's a represented lethal next turn. He has to be defensive somehow. Maybe teacher swipe. Yeah, I guess teacher swipe is what it is. Hmm. If there was a little bit more damage, like if there was another wrath, there could be the uh, swipe double wrath play to maybe stabilize, but it doesn't. It doesn't really look like there's going to be much happening here, as RDU just won't be able to come back on the board. And even if he does, it'll probably happen over the next two or three turns. And in two or three turns, there's going to be a Ysera down. And there's absolutely no way he's dealing with that. Yeah, tough stuff overall uh, for RDU. I don't know what's the best. I still think swiping probably be the best play, but he chooses to wrap as well. Mm -hmm. Just to get that big minion off the board. But I feel like now in the game, the special energy minion is actually more threatening towards pushing for lethal. It's weird, man, seeing Priest be the beatdown, but that's what happens when you get out the early circle of healing with the injured Blade Master, and it got even worse when you still had the Valence chosen on that creature. Mm -hmm. Pretty nutty. Looks like uh, he's going to bet on a Force of Nature clear. That's very indicative of that hero power play there. And I think because of that, you probably want to taunt up rather than pushing for any uh, creative plays. So I get five you're... damage in, and if your opponent Force of Nature Savage World clears and you play Ysera, the only downside is you lose all your dragons by doing this. So Blackwing Corruptor... Not getting the initial value, but you, you have to clear this. Yes, you do. You absolutely have to clear this. You have to uh, combo defensively. You're going to be on 6 HP, and you're going to have a clear board. Now, in terms of draws, I don't believe there is any one card that the priest can draw to seal out the game instantly. So, I don't know. Maybe in some extreme outside chance, there's something that can happen here. But... It looks uh, astoundingly unlucky, if it would. Yeah, no early game plays to innervate out despite having it. Hero powering on turns uh, one to th or on two and three, and priest able to get out such a big tempo that it didn't really matter. And and then finally, that's where the hero power can actually be one of the most dominant because it has those big minions to to let it scale. You need to try, you get a clear, but you're still very far from a win. And uh, when you know, Lady Ysera hits the board, it's just going to be the beginning of the end here. Uh, I foresee Savit's walking away with 3-1, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I, we can also have nothing happen. <laughs> Ancient of War. Oh, you should have yes. upgraded it. Yes. Uh, oh, there's oh, Awakens too. That's it. I, I think uh, you wouldn't blame RDU for conceding here. You can't actually deal with Ysera. 
He can silence it, but then it's just a big minion attacking him every turn. Pay attention, class. He's gonna try one more time. Wild Growth Cycles. This is actually a good play. He's trying to flood the board with uh, small minions uh, in order to perhaps uh, push for a, a big Savage Roar board clear. He's going to be on uh, just a few points of HP here, though. Now, I want to personally see a uprooted Ancient of War into a... Ben Awakens? Yes! Oh, my God. No! no! This is too nice. That, that probably gets a 0 out of 10. From zero me. out of ten PM. Zero out of ten. But uh, he does uh, move on. Saviz is going to uh, take the match over RDU. RDU will be moving into the the decider game. RDU is not out. This is the winners round. So uh, Saviz, being the winner of the winners round with a two zero score, will be the first player from Group B to move on to the finals tomorrow. RDU will drop to the. Uh, uh, to the level below, he'll have to be playing, uh, I believe it's Firebat, who was the winners, the winner of the losers match. Uh, but that, that will have to wait a little bit. Uh, coming up next, we'll have the second winners match for you guys between uh, Ostkaka and Life Coach, I believe. In the meantime, we, uh, we have an update for the second losers round. Uh, it was Super JJ versus Zele. Uh, Super JJ took those matches three to one. So uh, I guess the mid-range shaman has yeah. pulled out a win, and we will see just a little oh, bit more of that. The dream is alive. <laughs> That's right. Well, well, we'll see what happens uh, between the, this match here. The winner moves on uh, between Oskaka and Life Coach to day number three. The loser has to play against a mid-range shaman. Quite interesting indeed. Big shout out to uh, our sponsors as well. Uh, Geek Feel, the Curse Network, Hearthpone, as well as the Innkeeper. Uh, cool little thing to help you build your decks. Just check it out. Uh, it's all over our promotions and whatnot. Um, helps you spot the cards that you're missing when you're building the those meta decks to help you climb the ladder. In the meantime, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have our next match. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.